and Ted Keller, too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you! Get lost. Lost for words. Love lost. Lost in translation. Lost his head. Lost cause. No love lost between them. Lost and found. Lost soul. Lost in the shuffle. And my favorite, lost in space. Welcome to Creature Features. Livingston, Tangela, Vince. As a budding young lad sprouting up in a small city just northeast of London, I, like many of my fellow mates, became fatigued with the meager offerings on the BBC and often viewed a good share of American-made television programs instead. And one of my most favorite shows, as I've revealed prior, was the wondrous Lost in Space. You might recall that we even recently had the robot on as a guest. A cantankerous motor mouth monstrosity, if I recall correctly. That would be a rather accurate observation, Dr. Smith. But while the robot was fun and the good doctor funny, the real eye candy of the show was the stunning and charming Judy Robinson, portrayed by the stunning and charming Marta Kristen. And the loveliest of the Robinsons will be our guest right here tonight. Frankly, I'm rather shocked that you managed to book a woman of such class and distinction for this, this show. It was easy. The robot threw in a good word for me. For you, not so much. Movie-wise, we'll be showing a famous Russian science fiction film that was originally titled Planeta Burr, meaning Storm Planet. This movie was then absconded by an American producer, rescripted, redubbed, and some scenes were added portraying women in swimwear. This atrocity was retitled Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women, and we'll be serving you that particular dish tonight. This film is unwatchable. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Hmm. Livingston, Tangela has a question for you. If you find the film so repulsive, why then do you continuously play back the part where the women are frolicking on the beach? I never. Hmm. And she adds that you never will either. In any case, it should be a fantastic show you don't want to miss, so don't you dare go away, because it's going to be another night of space travel fright right here on Creature Features. I like that. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat. Making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. You know, I kind of already welcomed them, but I always want to make sure I welcome them when I come back as well. We're with Marta Kristen. You guys know Marta. You, you know, you like world famous. I'm world famous? No, you oh. are universally famous. Thank you, universally No, because you've been all over space. <laughs> yes, but the, lost, unfortunately. Of course, but they know you on the vegetable planet. Oh, the vegetable planet. I love the vegetables. They know you on the planet with the little robots. Yes, little, little tiny robots. And, you know, the silver suit. You know, one of these, next time you come, you have to bring that silver suit with you. 
<laughs> they had to have left you a copy of that, right? No, they no? didn't, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We could barely move in those silver suits oh, the first I year. So. They were so hot, they were made out of a material that had um, that the firemen, firefighters used. Right. And uh, you couldn't breathe in them and you couldn't sit in them. And so. they were very quite tight. Oh, very mm -hmm. tight. And All right, so we got modded tonight. We're going to watch uh, Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. I understand oh. you have not seen this film. I have not. It's a treat. A I say that with tongue planted firmly <laughs> in cheek. I know about no, that. You know, actually, the original film was Russian. Russian? It was, yes, it was called Planeta Burr, which means uh, uh, Stormy Planet. And uh, it was a wonderful film. I've watched it with a translation subtitle thing. And it looks like a nice film, but then they took it, somebody here, and they re it and made it a different story. And they added bikini-clad women. And that's how the prehistoric women part came in. Prehistoric women? Right. You mean bikinis are prehistoric? I, now that confused me as well. Well, it is confusing. No, it's I mean, it's I did horrible. beach blanket bingo. I, I was talk in a about bikini it. I there. want to talk about this because that is the strangest movie title I've ever heard in my it, entire life. It, but, you know, B, 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 beach blanket bingo. Is that what they put on the director chair? B, 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 B. All right, well, let's do this. Let's start the movie, and then right. I want to hear everything ever known about Lost in Space from you. Oh, that's a big, big chore. It is, and we've got time just for okay. you. Okay. All right, so off we go to Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women when we come back with Marta Kristen, Judy Robinson. Don't go away. The future of mankind is being decided behind closed doors. In laboratories all over the world, scientists are working on projects designed to take man beyond the confines of this earth. You are looking at the actual models of spacecraft now being developed by agencies of the United States government. This is an Apollo spacecraft designed for elliptical orbit of the moon. Its lunar landing vehicle can transport three men safely to and from the moon's surface. These are other types of manned and remote control mechanisms, each designed for a specific function, many already in operation as satellites of this Earth, some in readiness for the moonshot, others designed for probes in deep space, a few to serve as space stations, and the most complex of all, prototypes of craft capable of putting a man on the surface of another planet. The wheel was one of man's first inventions and has been with him all of his civilized life. But now it, like so many other of his creations, must be modified to fit his new demands. These are three types of variable radius wheels designed to transport a vehicle over a rocky surface. New concepts are being created almost daily. Some will never get beyond the drawing board, but others, or their descendants, will become part of man's greatest adventure the exploration and colonization of space. All over the world, men and women are working to make that dream a reality. Every aspect of the journey is being analyzed from the tiniest control devices to the mightiest rocket engines. But it's not enough to just get there. Just as the great explorers sailed from Spain and England and France to discover the Americas so that the colonizers might come later, so will our exploration spacecraft precede the colonizers of the planets. Already plans are being made for the colonies. Sources of food and power must be found. Artificial atmosphere is created. Everything done to build an Earth away from the Earth. No man living today can predict exactly what the future holds. But this much we do know. All through man's march across this Earth, the wildest dreams and fantasies of one age have become the commonplaces of the next. The motion picture you are about to see can be called today a fantasy of the future. But one day, maybe not too far distant, audiences will be able to look back on it in the same spirit with which we view pictures about the first covered wagons crossing the plains.
Venus. Venus. The planet named after the goddess of love. This is where I left her. 26 million miles away. Because I know she exists. I know she does. I know it. All the time we were there, I heard her. Her and that sweet, haunting sound she makes, like the sirens that tempted Ulysses. And I think I'm crazy back here on Earth. Crazy and still intoxicated by the atmosphere back there. But wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me tell you the whole story. All of it. From the beginning. And see what you think. You be the judge. It was two years ago, in 1998, that the first manned spaceship left Earth for the planet Venus. This attempt ended in tragedy. A meteor hit the ship. Everybody, everything was lost. Everything but the will to get there, to explore Venus. And so... Refueling was accomplished in record time. There was no time to lose. is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Miss Marta stepped away so we could do mail. Actually, Tenchala asked her to step away. I hope you said it nicely. Oh, of course she did. She likes Marta. So uh, we're going to get back to Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women first, but I think we need to do mail, right? Indeed. It's, he doesn't like standing there unless we're doing mail. I like to be productive. Well, you are productive. It's a good thing you're not reproductive. All right, what do we got? Our first letter is from our new fans in Ohio, Tim and Dala. Dala, you remember Dala Hood? From uh, the Little Rascals and our gang? I do not. No, Dollar Hood. No, you, you need to watch, he needs to watch more television. All right, here we go. Uh, we love your show. All three of you are fun to watch. We discovered you on YouTube this summer. You and Livingston have your hands full keeping Tangela out of trouble. You know, he has his hands full. I have my po pocketbook empty. So that's the way that situation works. We love the film Grave of the Vampire with your guest, Aka Stoker. He was wonderful. We would like to suggest a film for Tangela, Night of the Lepus from 1972. Lepus is rabbit, right? Could be. Not? Leper? Leper. No, it's not a leper. All right. Uh, we'll Google this afterwards. Uh, Night of the Lepus from 1972. Tangela will love it. It's about a giant killer bunny. Look, right there. In black and white. All right, keep up the great work and stay healthy. Thank you, Tim and Dollar. And I wonder if it's actually Dollar Hood. Or maybe she's related to Dollar Hood. I don't know. Write back to us. Let us know. All right. Letter number two is from Jenny Butterfield in Lake Havasu, Arizona. That's a nice place. Have you ever been? No. That's it. Just no. You never plan to go? No, I have never been, and I have no plans to go there. You know what's there? London Bridge. The actual London Bridge. The original London Bridge. Disassembled and moved 
to Lake Havasu, Arizona. Why? And I bet Jenny has walked across. I don't know why. Do I look like Google? No, you do not. Maybe I do. I don't know what Google looks like. All right, here she goes. Dear Vince, I hear you recently completed the process for American citizenship. That I did. Glad to have a horror host as a new American. Well, I, I don't know if that's quite a good thing. Was wondering, as a former Brit, what's your opinion on our form of politics, and who were you rooting for? Yours truly, Jenny Butterfield, Lake Havasu. Uh, you know, I'm an entertainer. I am not the person to ask opinion of politics, and quite frankly, you know, if you, you watch the show to get away from all that, don't you? You don't want to talk about religion and politics and all that stuff. You want to be entertained. And I, I, I think the last thing in the world an entertainer should do is talk about politics, right? I mean, you're just going to anger half the people, right? At least. At least. No. I, I, there's an old saying that goes, shut up and play your guitar. And I keep up to that. And uh, in my case now, I guess it's shut up and play your horror films, right? Right. Anyways, thanks for writing, Jenny. Any more mail for me? One more. One more. Oh. Booklet. Good Lord. I'm going to need a magnifying glass for this one. All right. This is a long read from Neil Weirich. 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 Middletown, Pennsylvania. You know, I wonder if there's like a left town and a right town and then Middletown. It's a possibility. Don't deny it. You All confuse right. me sometimes. I confuse myself more. All right, uh, here we go. Dear Mr. Vincent Van Dahl, Mr. Livingston, and Miss Tangella, the Empress of the Macabre. You know, she's not quite dark enough, I think. I think if she, like, changed her hair to black, it would be better, right? To be the Empress of the Macabre. All right, I have a lot to read here. Here we go. I had to write to tell you how grateful I am to have run across you on YouTube. I grew up on Vincent Price and low-budget horror movies. I love them. I can't get enough of them. Even the worst ones can give you a good laugh. All three of you bring your own special talent to the show, Tangella and her objects of curiosity. What do you got tonight? Oh, that one again? Mm. Uh, Mr. Livingston and his, and his expressionless eye rolls. Now, I find them quite expressionful. And the beginning of each episode, Mr. Van Dahl waving his fingers with a familiar stay tuned. You know, somebody else told me I'd do that. I just don't realize I'm doing it at the time. I, or maybe I need to stop and just put my hands at my side. Or I'll look like a real YouTuber who's always talking with his hands. There are many things you right? do that you do not realize. I also enjoyed the guests you have on the show, all very interesting and informative. I just finished watching Guatemalan Handshake for the first time. There was something about that film that seemed familiar to me. After reading the credits, I learned that this film uh, was filmed in the area in which I live. Oh, that's wonderful. One movie I don't see in your list of episodes is Manos, The Hands of Fate. Can we get that one, Tom? We'll try. We're going to try. Uh, it has everything, bad script, bad acting, and bad music. Just add some bad hosts, and it'll be a wonderful combination, would it not? Well, I just wanted to let you know that you are appreciated, and you bring back memories to this older adult. Keep up the good work. Well, you are appreciated as well, Neil, and thank you so much for writing, and I hope everything is wonderful in Middletown, Pennsylvania. And do let us know if there's a left town and a right town. I think Living Stin and I are going to have a bet soon, a wager. Who knows? That's it. That's it. That is it for mail. If you would like to send us some, use the address you see appearing down here. Or if you'd like to send something in the post, no postal mail this week, eh? No. All right. No postal mail this week. But if you'd like to send us some, use this address down here. We'll be right back with Marta soon. But first, let's get back to Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. Funny, considering the way things turned out. What I was thinking about as we sped through the dark universe on our way to an unexplored planet. I was wondering if maybe there wasn't some reason that Venus had been named after the goddess of love. If maybe there wasn't some wise old astronomer way back in the dawn of time who knew something. 
something he kept to himself. My men. But before I could come to any conclusions about it, we were preparing for our touchdown on Venus, where maybe I'd find all the answers. And then, almost before I knew it, we were there, we were landing. begin celebrating yet. Ha. Huh. Oh. Is our level okay? Yep, there it is. On the button. Boy, it sure feels strange to have weight. Yes, it does seem strange. That's sure. But it's nice and solid. Well, I don't know about you fellas, but I'd like to see Venus. Open number three and hit the beam. Paper. Try the port viewer. Telescreen gets it okay. We'll pan port. Formations of weird rock. Something's there. I'll switch on the outside sound pickup. First what time I heard her. A human being? Hold it. It's finished. Transfer it to playback. Meanwhile, you might check upon the atmosphere, Hans. It better be good. Then you better get your spacesuit. We'll move out. Andre, I want you to attempt a contact with Sherman by radio. If you raise them, tell them to report their position. Then get yourself into a spacesuit. We're going to walk about. I'll be right behind you. That'll be handy if I slip. Get popping now. It's 4.7 on oxygen. That's pretty close. Marsha has radar movement. Sherman? She can't be sure, but it looks like two objects, one metallic and moving in the area we expected to search. Probably Kern and Sherman. Come on, Andre.
hope you'll contact us. take one of those things home for the zoo. You've got to be more careful, Andre. If we hadn't heard you call me... I didn't call. You called out to us. We heard you. But I didn't call you. It sounded like Lockhart. Let's be getting back. All we knew was that Marsha at Earth Control had spotted what was probably oh, Kearns and Sherman and approximately where they might be. So we started out in our space car, heading in that general direction. Not stopping to investigate the many prehistoric sites we passed. But we were still unable, no matter how hard we tried, to make radio contact with Kearns or Sherman. So we had no way of knowing what they were going through on that distant part of the planet. Let's rest. We have very little oxygen left us. Hope they're on the way. Looking for us. Through this heat. They may not be able to make it through to us. You better hope they'll get through it and spot us. I'm beginning to feel like my head's swimming. Of course. It's your torn suit. Infection is getting through. Maybe we ought to take some quinsel and... No. We'd have to rest after. Must... keep... moving. Portions of this program are sponsored by DoorTank, distributor of quality commercial doors nationwide. Would you drive a space car like that? I would try. You know, it looks like the Jetsons mobile without flight. It just it does sort hovers of, doesn't over it? the ground. Yes, yes. It's, the no, it's, it, it predated Luke Skywalker's Desert Cruiser. It did. And I, I believe it predated the Jetsons flying. I happen to think that Star Wars used a lot of our ideas. You're right. I don't know which ones, but I think you're right. Yeah, well. Of course they stole it. It's. I can imagine all of them watching Lost in Space as little boys. You had to. I, I believe it would be required. 
you know, of course you'd have to watch Lost in Space, 2001, Star Trek, and what else? Before they made Star Wars. Mm, Buster Crab. Oh, well, that's Buster way Crab, right? Before what was our time. Flash Gordon? Which one Flash was he? Gordon. Was Flash Gordon. Yes. I, sh I should yes. know these things. I don't. Yes. You yeah. know, JFK Jr. said it was his favorite show. He said Much this to, to you? his mother's dismay. Did he Not tell to me, you personally? No. Oh, he no. said it on, I think, on one of the interview shows. John As Carson. it should have been. Yeah. No. Why right. not? Right. Well, every boy's dream. To be lost in space? To be lost With in Judy space. Robinson. With Judy Robinson. Woo woo, Judy Robinson. Well. All right, so. You are not the first Lost in Space alumni we've had on the show. I'm not. You are How not. How dare you? No, we've had another one. Can you guess who? Hmm. Hmm. Dr. Smith? No, he's dead. Oh, yes. Um, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show okay. you. No, watch. Will? Will? No. Okay, Andrew? watch. We're going to run a clip. Watch, watch, watch. Will has been assigned to a space station called Babylon 5. We still correspond through email, though he did forget to send me a card on my birthday last year. She scares me. Oh, don't mind her. So, uh, what about the girls? How are they? Penny Robinson is alive and well, and operating a boutique in Toluca Lake, California. Judy Robinson is still, to this day, considered a babe. I liked Judy because she would often socialize with me. Hmm. The Prime Directive forbids taking human life, but I could certainly pinch you very hard. Warning. That's right. Warning, you know, his, warning. His real name is B9. B9, of course. I never knew that. I thought it was How just robot. How could you not have known that? Because I did not watch every single episode uh, and learn these uh, things. Yeah. Well, B9, now I know. He had a designation. Yeah, B9. So what was it like working with an actual robot? Well... I sort of adored him. So I would look at him in those wonderful blinking lights, you know, and he would say, Judy, you're a babe. Of course he was. Just would. like what you saw. Well, you know what confused me about the robot is I always thought the, the glowing mm -hmm. thing was his mm -hmm. face, but it's actually up in the bubble. It There's was. like eyes in yes, the bubble. I never realized yes. that. You know, imagine. He, you know, I, I, I bet he felt like a, a well-endowed woman who had always people looking at his chest <laughs> instead of his face. I said, my eyes are up here. Yeah, up here, up right, here. Right, my eyes are up here. Well, you know, he had those uh, clinchers, you know. That oh. They were a little dangerous at times. You had no, to be really no, careful no, when you went Tangella by. No, Tangella learned the hard way. Hard way, oh, she, yeah. Do not tease the robot. No. No, and you knew, never. You knew better. I did. To do I that. was older and wiser. Tell me, how did you get that job? Oh, oh it's a long story. But Irwin Allen, I heard, wanted me to come in to meet him. And I, I did some little research, and I found out that he liked color and he liked bling. So I, I had a pink suit that I wore, and big dangling earrings, big gold earrings. And this is an addition for a space program. Yes, right. yes. And I went in, and he said, I want that girl with the earrings. <laughs> and so, there you go. No, actually, they were testing people. We were with the same agency, and um, I was doing all the shows uh, on television you know, at the time. I, I like that story about the bling, but I think it had more to do with your own talent and your own beauty. Thank you. I yeah. hope so. The earrings. The earrings. I hope you kept the earrings, though. They could be your lucky I do. earrings, I have of them. course. You should. You should. All right. I'm getting the signal. We've got to get back to this movie. But when we come back, I want to hear more about Lost in Space and the other myriad of things you did. All right. So you stand by. I you guys to. stick around. This movie, uh, I don't know. Does it get better, Tom? It gets better, according to Tom, and we're going to see more robots. So we're talking about robots. We're okay. watching robots. It's Creature Features. It's a wonderful night. Don't go away.
device mechanism is in danger. Need protection. All right, John. Find shelter. Don't stop. We have to go on. Come on up. That's it. washed away. John. Bring him this way. There is no water. Come on. Just a little bit further. There's a cave right over there. Come on. That's it. Just a few steps further. There. I don't think I can go on much further. John, stay with us. Make sure they find us. They should know. Must. Must continue to work the laws of mathematics. There's always a precise probability. Mathematics might prove. Mathematics might... Uh. Marcia. Marsha. Pyrrhus. Pyrrhus, Marsha. You, you must help us. It's, it's closing in. I await your order. I await your order. Help them find us, John. The shoreline's the best. If we do, my friend, we'll never make it to him. Fat chance there is of finding him. That voice again. Hold up. Sounds like a girl. A girl? Perhaps. Or a monster.
My sisters are calling. Wake up. Wake up, Nyla. Our sisters are awake. They're hungry. You have slept enough. It is time to go into the sea. A human. Well, there are sure no humans here. Well, we're humans. Well, no one else has made it. You better believe it. But it sounds so human. Subhuman, you mean, like that 40 arm plant that just grabbed you. I still say it's a girl. A girl. With blue scales. Could be. He's on to something. It's possible that before us, other men got here. Especially in this age. You ought to know that, Hans. To a man of science, anything is possible until proven otherwise. I can't imagine any people in their right mind exploring planet Venus. Come on, Hans. We're here, and we're in our right minds, aren't we? Uh, let's go. soon be there. Keep trying. Maybe we can bring them in on the helmet, Mike. Kern has an auxiliary. I am. I'm getting... A woman. Must be Marsha. Static's really awful. Hear it? Point to point on the dial. We'll find it. I'll try it. Hello. John, hello. John, listen. This is the command ship. Are you there? No response. Come in. Up one more point. Come in. Better go to solar battery. Much bigger reach. I'm on it now. Hello. 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 You must hear me, John. Please open your mic and answer me. You must obey me, John. No response. Try another point. One, two, five. You have to readjust your frequency for transmitting, if you hear me. I hear you. I have adjusted. Can you report your position and plot number? Over. Square 40 in shelter. Tell me what's outside. Water, rock above, falling on large rock. That's square 40. Not far. Ask him about the men. Hello. We would like to know. 
about Kern and also about Sherman. They do not speak. They do not move. How much time before we get there? Who knows? Commander, maybe the robot can help. Try. Keep an eye on the compass. Grab onto them. Hello. You will listen, John. First, you will obey me and do precisely what I say. You will listen. Listen, John. Obey my every command. Remove container two from Kern's first aid kit. Repeat, container two. his helmet. I have one tablet. Place the tablet in his mouth. You must do this quickly. Revive him with water. Pour it over his face. Quickly. Then close his helmet. Well, good evening. This is Mary from Roner Park. I used to sit and watch creature features and scare myself silly when I was a young girl babysitting. I just ran across it this evening and I am so excited to see that it is on. Take good care and keep creature features a coming. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Marta, Marta, Marta. Now, can you imagine making a film where half the actors are in Russia five years prior, and then the other half of the actors are women on a beach in Malibu? Hmm, that would be very difficult. Five years later, right, right. No, it's 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 like it's like the the episodes of Bewitched where you never saw her and her sister in the same room because ah, it was the same. They didn't actress, have split right? screen yeah, then. Something like that. I don't oh. know. The making of Lost in Space. What was it like to make an episode of Lost in Space? It took a very long time, like, long, long hours. We would be there from six in the morning. I would be there for makeup and would leave maybe at nine at night. Right. And, um, but it was always so exciting for me because I, you know, here I was a young person and um, I had been doing most of the shows in television and, and uh, on, on network television and um, but this was I knew very special right the first time I was driving to 20th to do the pilot my heart was pounding and how old were you early. at the time I was 19 19 and so you're just a I, girl. oh I was a girl right. and and um, I was thinking this is really, I loved science fiction. And I'd been reading Asimov and you know, all of the, the science fiction writers, and I said, this is going to make a difference. I mean, we had the space age, and, 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 and everything was, there was so much progression in, in, in the, uh, in the space in the industry at the time. It was in the middle of the space race, right? It was in the middle right. of the space right. race. And I said to myself, this is going to be really something. However, who had a clue that 
over 50 years later, I'd be talking about it and it was still popular. And I know so many young people who are watching it now and get such a kick because can you imagine, can you imagine what they're thinking where they see the technology that, that is, you know, right. that, that we have now versus what we had then. But I think we did quite well with, with what we had, except for the, the aluminum foil you know, meteor, meteorites. So, you know, yeah, I, I enjoyed those. They were fun, no, weren't they? they? It was fun. So we had a wonder, we had wonderful days, and we would get very tired. And Irwin Allen would come to the set, and he would take a metal trash can, and he would bang on it, and he would say, "All right, everybody, time is money. Time is money." And we'd all go, "Uh oh, Irwin's here." With a metal trash. With a metal trash can. Oh my time goodness. is money, and. Um, Maybe it was time to buy like a bell or something instead of a trash can. It would have been nice, a little bell. Right. I don't think it would have made any difference. We would get very, very silly, you see, at the end of the day. Right. Because we would get punch drunk. And so, uh, when, like one time I had to say, oh, look, little tiny robots or little hundred robots or small robots or miniature robots. And I could not say it. I could not say it. And everybody started laughing. Every, you know, and... We were all trying to, I'd say, lit, 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 and then everyone, I, I couldn't, and finally, and finally Irwin came, ah, ah, and said, I finally, I, oh boy, I better, I better do this right, and, and I did. Oh, I bet that happened quite a bit on the, the, the walking, talking vegetable episode. Oh, oh, well, Mark had a very difficult time. He, he finally turned around to us, and he said, eight years of Lee Strasberg, and I'm talking to a vegetable? Oh, and, goodness, right. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, but you know, Poor man. there was something quite charming, I think, about this show. Not yes, many people do, but I, I, I don't know. I sort of love the big carrot and, I, you know, I mean, come on. Talking. It was campy, but it was, that was in back then. It was that very was, in. It was, yeah, we were competing with um, Batman and right, Robin. And, right. and uh, so it became, from the first year when it was quite serious and more, Twilight Zone-ish right. and, and uh, Outer Limits-ish to, uh, to campy and, and camp. almost a, a cartoon style of, right. of a show. It was the natural progression. It was thing. absolutely. Well, speaking of campy, I'm getting the signal we got to get back to Voyage the Planet of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> However, when we come back, we're going to uh, learn some more about your life on oh. Arts in Space. And I want to hear some more about some of the other things you've done as well. All right. You know, you, she wasn't Judy Robinson all her life. No. Right. All right. You guys stay with us. We'll be right back. At least we know they're alive. Let's hope they stay that way. Commander, look there. I'm ready with the astro gun. Some kind of flying reptile. You may not see us. He's turning around. Maybe not. We're in for it now. He knows we're here. Luck. Take it now. Here he comes. Don't miss him. Here he comes again. Open hull. We'll submerge. We were forced to submerge, even though we had killed the flying reptile, because of the damage the creature had caused when it hit us. And it was a good thing, too. For here, under the sea, we were to find the second clue to life on Venus. Let's put it down for a minute. Take a rest. It's not part of the beach if our calculations are correct. I hope this will run again. Don't worry, it will. Look, the cliffs are all in even rows, like streets. I'll look around, just five minutes. Might find something interesting.
What makes Nyla and Marama so sad? Come, sisters, let us see. What do you know? It's, it's, it's a statue. Andre! What's up? You just look here. That's only a petrified tree. Only? Why, it's a bronze statue. And much more, Hans. Rubies. You say rubies? Show me. Simple. The eye of an idol. An idol? Yes, a reptile. A reptile resembling that flying monster that attacked us earlier. Up there. You're right, Andre. I'm not laughing anymore. There was a civilization here. And I'll bet you there still is. search for... I didn't know what. I felt something. I don't know. I felt as though I were being watched. But I didn't see anything except a harmless octopus. Yet, still feeling a strange presence, I went on. Then, as quickly as it came, that weird sensation vanished. And then there was nothing. Nothing but the sea. So I followed my original impulse, looking for a clue like the statue of the flying reptile. And I found nothing except a rock that I liked for its shape and that could serve as a specimen for the geologists.
stay away. Rary? Carry him away. Couldn't have lasted much longer. You're, you're not alone. Here we are, Skipper. Good. We'll need more fire. Everything in the car is soaking wet. Ah, uh, feels good to sit. How are the batteries, Hans? They stay dry. The atom plant? Still hot. You've got that worried look again, Hans. You're right. I've pulled and checked every wire and part in that darn radio. It won't operate. I've tried everything I know. I tell you, it's simply hopeless. How about a long string in an oatmeal box? <laughs> oh, Neil Pox. The radio will dry out. We know it's not a dead planet. Not completely. Our proof is the statue. And Ruby. And the woman. She's probably somewhere. For his sake. But the main thing is, there could be a whole race of people out there watching us, hiding, afraid that we'll observe them. Bite them? We came from above, Drop. To them, we're probably some kind of monster. What if they're human shape? They very well could look like us. But mind you, I'm only advancing a little hypothetical science fiction. Because nothing should be overlooked. Let's face it. They built a city that's now under the sea. Hans, it must be true. Many made it to shore from the sea. Then why didn't they build themselves another? We may find they did. When we explore the planet. Before we leave, I'll meet her. Beautiful song and a beautiful girl. She must have heard you. Where is it? Everywhere. Suppose it could be an omen? Or maybe she's helping us. Just see what she looks like. Can the car make it? I'm sure. Boding had come over me. A chilly, ominous sensation. I didn't know what it meant. And I kept staring at that rock I'd found, as though perhaps it might hold an answer. Andre! Andre! Thanks for waiting. She'd take care of you. Stop teasing him, Hans. He's in love. <laughs>
Guests of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Does Mr. Vandal know you have yet another dog? I'm sure. gotten suddenly dark. Well, it's no wonder. What makes you say that? There's an ash cloud above us. An ash cloud? A volcano. Yes. It's spectacular. And beyond the volcano, it looks like the lights of a city. The red spot Andre saw. We must get a move on. Not right away. This might be our only chance to gather some samples, lava and ash, to take away with us. All right. We'll go to a much better vantage point than right now. German, come. But look at the magnificence. No one on Earth has seen such a sight. Spectra sample? Getting it now. That's enough. The lava is rising. 
Sakes, hurry.
Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, Marda, I, I need hair like yours. It looks wonderful. But you know, your, my hairdresser did your hair tonight. Yes, she did. I don't know why she can't make me look like that. You yes, know, she did a wonderful lovely, job. Absolutely lovely. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Lost in space. Yes. How has it affected your life? Oh, my goodness. In many, many, many ways. Good um, ways, I hope. Good ways. Right. Very, very good ways. When, um, uh, when I was in the last year of doing the show, I received a telegram from at the studio and it said i am your sister Anneli Rusanen and now, you need to explain that you did not know you had a sister correct i did not know right. i was adopted from norway right. when i was 5 right. and i was in an orphanage until then and um uh i had always i i mean i had the most wonderful parents, uh, my adopted parents. Right. They couldn't have been better. I mean, they were professors and oldest members in the Peace Corps in their 80s. I mean, oh, they nice. were amazing, right. just wonderful. I loved my best friends. And, um, but I longed to have sisters. Blood and family. I longed right. to have a large family. And so when I found, An or Anneli found me, um, I... Um, I immediately responded and said, oh, yes. And I took my parents to, uh, to Finland, where she lived, and met a group of brothers and sisters. How wonderful. Yes, and, and we kept finding more. Anneli kept finding more. She'd write to me and she'd say, Marta, I have found another, I have found another sister. The way she found me was that um, I had done an, uh, an interview um, for a Finnish magazine, right. and uh, I had mentioned my real name, which is Birgit Annelise Rusanen. Birgit. 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 Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. And she had seen a photo uh, my mother had in a drawer right. when she was young, a teenager, and um, remembered that name. And so she went to my mother and she said, "Is this my sister?" And my mother s tearfully said, "Yes, it is," and told her the story of my. My birth my, and the happenstance of, of you know, the end of the war and right. you know all of that, right. the very difficult times that that um, parents and children were having, and you know, refugees and of all of that. So, lost in space, helped you find your long lost family. Yes. Yes. How fantastic! Yeah. I have another story too, if, if you have time. Yes. I. My husband, my late husband, and I used to trek in the Himalayas. Right. And um, uh, on our 20th wedding anniversary, we went. Uh, and, uh, and, and we trekked, well, we trekked up to 16,000 feet that time. And we were at 15,000 feet. And uh, we were at this, uh, what they call a botia, which is a little hotel, but it was, you know, made out of cardboard practically. Right. And, right. and in walked this scraggly group of, of, of trekkers. And they were from Australia. Right. And I was just sitting with my husband, and um, the guy, one man looked at me and he said, my God, you look just like Marta Kristen. And I wasn't going to say anything. He said, you know, Judy Robinson of Lost in Space. And I just you know, smiled, and I, you know, I don't like to say much. Well, my husband immediately, gleefully said, she is, she's Marta Kristen of Lost in Space. He goes, no, 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 that, that can't, can't, yeah, no. And he said, yes, yes, she is. And he said, oh my God, he said, when I was a kid, a young, young boy, I told all my friends I was going to marry Judy Robinson. And, um, and so I sat on his lap. I put my arms around him. My husband did not care. Of course not. And he had his friends take photos of us, How me wonderful. wrapped around him. And uh, <clears throat> then that night we all got very drunk on apricot brandy. And uh, we had a hard time the next day uh, trekking, but, uh, but it was worth it. It was wonderful. So just so you know, if you ever come across Marta Christian, you have to tell her a story like that, and then you can go have a party and she I'll will do I'll sit on your lap. No, no, I won't. That would be wonderful. <laughs> all right, well, what do you say we wrap this movie up? 
I would love that. And then when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next. All right. All right. Off we go back to Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. We will see you on the other end of the credits. See you soon. It was just a metal monster. <laughs> and yet when his destruction was imminent, he called my name. Placid and calm. A frightening. Yes, I suppose it does, if you use imagination. We'll soon be home. That's right, but we we'll leave a friend behind. Come. Join the rest of us. So we took stock of the situation. And though we tried to keep our spirits up, it was still pretty discouraging. Any the volcano had destroyed some of our provisions, and our rocket ship's fuel supply was low anyway, considering the added weight of Kearns and Sherman. It looked like we'd have to be starting back very soon. What else is there to do? Well, <laughs> we can look for Andre's girl. Very cute, Hans. You name them after us? Hmm? Well, with triplets, it's better with numbers. Looks to me like he's raising his own countdown. Why not names? I'd forget. I'm worried about him. <laughs> so you really found proof there were people on this planet. Hard to believe. Believe it or not, my dear Mr. Kern, it's true. And they could still be here. I don't go along with that. Could a human survive in a place like this? You survive. And man will almost always adapt himself in time. And don't forget in the dim past we all lived in water. For centuries our Earth was toxic. But that atmosphere evolved mankind's form, adjusting the earth. And I'd bet that these people on our planet couldn't live. The air'd be poisoned. Afraid I don't share your opinion. You just can't close your mind to it. We found proof. Proof of intelligent being. And those lizard men of Kearns. That's proof. Look, suppose they do look like lizards. Couldn't they be people? Hmm? Suppose they saw the ship. Got frightened, then donned their lizard costumes, eh? then jumped up and down to spook us away. <laughs> what possible story could explain it better, huh? <laughs> no, you're the winner. Joking aside, my friend, man, lizard, or what, I know there were or are intelligent people here. If we just had time, I think they might come to us. Look, even you, Kern, said you thought you saw the lights of a city beyond the volcano. I said they looked like, not were. Here, you two. Have some coffee and rest your voice. If only there was some way to communicate with them, some way to make them understand we were not an enemy, that we wanted nothing except to know their ways, study their civilization. Or was it really all just fancy? Just my wishful imagination? And that sound only an accident caused by the wind in the canyons? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, watch it. Now that's where your hey. countdown is at. my
Wake up, sisters. It is a new day, and our land is safe again. But what is that? Something strange is there. Come and see. find her and take her with us. <laughs> I'd vote for that. But she might not like us much anyway. If we could explore beyond those hills, I'll bet you money we'd find her and the city. You've been reading too many comics. Kern wouldn't believe she existed if she were sitting on his lap right now. Want to bet? We're here. we can be proud of. Look at all the samples we got. There's going to be a large headline when they see all these great things we're bringing back to them. This one's loaded, old man. Steady, child. Bring the spectra. than any rain we'd ever seen. But it continued without let up. In fact, it seemed to increase in strength. As we planned our takeoff procedure, which required some adjustment because of Kearns and Sherman, I know we all felt slightly uneasy, nervous, as we listened to the heavy rainfall on the ship. For myself, I, I listened with a sinking feeling as though every drop were taking me further and further from ever finding her. Then suddenly... Quickly, Andre! Hans! Was all level ground when we 
land. The stream's cutting a whole new channel above. Skipper, look here. The crack running clear across. If it widens anymore, we'll all be lost. Quick, lighten ship for emergency blast off. Maybe we can beat it. They are stronger than our gods. They are stronger than Terra. Terra is a false god.
strongest god of all. We worship you. That's the story. It's been two years now, and there's been no plan to return to Venus. Lockhart and Kearns have moved on to other missions. There's Mars to be explored, and Jupiter. But I can't forget her, and I'm going back. Maybe someday I'll see her. Maybe I'll die trying. And that brings the landing gear up on Voyage to the Planet of Prehistoric Women. What did you think of that film, Tangella? Yeah, she doesn't like bikini-type movies. We've shown a couple. Mm. Like we, we had a Bikini Planet-type movie, and uh, she did not like that no, one either. No, you no, you didn't? And yeah, but which, is, which is ironic, because she likes bikinis. No, she has it, like quite oh. a collection of bikinis. Oh. Yeah, yeah. She won't wear them on the show. And mm. We don't ask, because oh. that would be inappropriate. So... Uh, Spiders, thank oh, you. Oh, spiders. She has quite a collection of plastic oh, spiders. Uh, so, Marta Christian, Lost in Space, yes. what are you doing next? I've started uh, a book. A book? A book. And it's about Birgit. Ah, um, your starting, former original name. Yes. If you missed that last segment. And segment. it is uh, my, uh, my dream. It's called Birgit's Dream. Right. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it's about being in the orphanage. And wanting to have a family and to be wanting to have tender love and wanting to be in a safe place oh, and, I, and it's a, this sounds like a children's book it's a children's right. book right. and uh, it's really about what every child needs and um, I'm so affected by you know all the things that have gone on and you know throughout Syria and the well you know all the the war problems right. are, I won't go right. there but but it uh, but so it's for that, it's for that, you know, uh, understand, every child knows. It'll be like um, a child will, you know, children tend to be afraid and, right. and um, afraid that of the dark and afraid of, of being uh, separated from their families. And, right. and, uh, and at the end, I, my dream comes true. You can't give away the oh, end of I your book. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't That's matter. That's a spoiler. That, That's well, a, you know. So is this going to be like a format, like a children's book with yes. a little bit of text? And, and I'm doing nice the illustrations myself. You're doing the illustrations? Yes, I'm an artist oh, as well. Goodness. And, and uh, you know, I was, I'm very involved in theater. When can we expect to see that on the Amazon bestseller list? Well, I certainly hope it will be. Um, I've just finished the illustrations, or the, 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 the drawings on the illustrations, right. and I'm going to paint them. Oh, and, um, and I have a friend who is a genius at Adobe. She's going to help me format it all, and uh, then, then I'll You're doing the entire thing, out. Cradle to Grave. And Cradle you said grave. you had another project you're working on as well. I just did a, a, a film, um, and I play a healer. A healer? A healer. And a very quirky, wonderful character, and I just—I had so much fun doing oh, how it. Fun. I had my hair, you know, all up, and you know, I just wore a robe, and 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 um, now that I'm of a certain age, I get to do character work. Oh, that's and, great! And uh, I, I've done improv for years. In fact, I worked with the um, with uh, Gary Austin, who founded the Ground, Groundlings, and um, worked with the Deaf West Theater, um, uh, who were amazing wonderful actors and um so in improv you know you you you, you develop characters so right. i have this you know cranky old you know 
southern lady who just right. smoked cigarettes and, and then I have the other you know very sophisticated and right. the low deep voice and so uh, um, and I'm, I'm now able to utilize those characters when I go on auditions so, so it, it's, it's quite exciting it's, it's a good it's a good time in my life it's all a transition and we just have to be in the moment and and well, uh, you're Judy Robinson you can handle it that's right you've seen you've seen worse I was talking to Livingston. Mr. Livingston about that and he's, he, he's quite wise he was very wise and he oh. said Marsha you have to live in the moment Speaking of which, you've got a website where people can buy things and look at things and Mar find your book and mm -hmm. all that. And that is martachristian.com, right? martachristian.com. Martachristian That's right. Quite easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you for being a wonderful guest. You're absolutely splendid. And thank you so much for coming up. And excuse well, the insect Thank you for being such an amazing host. No. And Tangela, I when are we having our tea? Soon. She's got something Soon. brewing back there. Next time you're up, you're going to look us up, right? I certainly will. All I'll right. Be back. We would love to have you back. And as far as you guys go, we would love to have you back as well next week, exactly seven days from now. Or is it 6.5? How does that work? Hmm. Six hours and 22. Six days, 22 hours. We want to see you back again to watch another show. We're going to have another movie, another guest. I don't know what either is going to be, but I think it'll be fun, right? Want to be fun? All right. See you next time. So, uh, Marta, you know, I'm thinking with all these commercial space agencies, maybe I should renew my interest in becoming an astronaut. What do you think? Get lost.